what it is. Mm. Okay, the I. Hi. Yay. Everybody got quiet. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, yeah, because y'all, we were talking about booty juice from Haiti. So we had to clear that up real quick. <laughs> not mine. Was, not, not mine. Not <laughs> mine. Mine. Mine for sure. Mark is like, wait a minute, let's clear it up. So you guys, I, I've been excited about this man because I met him in New Orleans a few years ago. Um, we were at the Conja, the Conja Fest, right? Yeah. St. John's. St. John's Conjure yep. Fest, and um, he was the cutest, you guys. He was the cutest then. And I had opportunity at another St. John's event to kind of hang out with him and eat beignets and all that good stuff and walk the French market. Uh, yeah. the beignets. Um, oh, God. Let me close this off. And so for a lot of you that don't know that he practices, he does these amazing things with keys jewelry i've seen some beautiful beautiful work of yours tell us it, what what do you practice what would you what, what do you do cool so um for anybody who hasn't for anybody else um besides the, the two hosts who have <laughs> seen and met me um my name is marcus i go by marcus keys as magical practitioner and i'm currently a student of the anderson fairy witchcraft tradition under uh tommy starchild of the elegant mind um, of the Hell Hell's Mary line of the Elkin line. Uh, but um, it's basically um, what I practice on my own is sort of, ba it's basically folk magic. More of um, based on what I know from my Latin culture. I'm Mexican American. Um, and and uh, it, I basically work with keys uh, in my divination practice as well. Um, just to help folks throw shells or bones. I actually have a set of keys that actually talk to me saying what's locking, what's unlocking in a person's life. And then I follow up with cards and give a description on what to follow in order for things to open up, um, for, you know, to pull things into your life. Um, and I also do skeleton key talismans and make candles for folks, and mojo bags, and spirit dolls. And um, it's, uh, I've been doing this for almost pretty much, like more than like a decade, probably like 13, 14 years maybe. But professionally, wow. I guess I can say, like, you know, the past, like, six years, I've been actively doing this. So. Where where can they find your products? So uh, my, my candles are the biggest thing. I prepare seven-day glass candles um, for magical intentions. And you can find me on MarcusSkeletonKeys.com. Give us some of the names of your candles. <laughs> All right, well, a lot of, well, let's see. Do I have? Do you have any, y'all? Y'all got to hear some of the names of the candles. Oh yeah, uh, hold on just a sec. Well, I mean, most of them are just um, most of them are all very uh, the traditional uh, condition candles. Um, I don't really have any. I have yet to upload these ones online right now. The ones that are funny, but um, you know, I have basic blessing, cut and clear. Uh, attraction my abracamino road opening ones are actually very popular um because i again skeleton keys road opening that's mm -hmm. what i mostly what i work with work um and um the other ones that i <laughs> i'm trying to put out there and market to just more with like, um, a latin culture flair um is you know so basically uh, a protection candle would be like mal de ojo you know basically um with the evil eye the blue um um, the, the blue eye, the blue evil eye basically on it or la chancla for protection you know the the chancla or the sandal basically is what we all kind of yes, <laughs> yes <but laughs> yeah, I, we love it. Get... I love yeah, it i love it i love the um, play on your culture and the way that you set it up i think i mean it, it, it's fun but i like the fact that i've had a few people that have bought candles from you and oh. they say oh they're powerful they're really especially your road opener a lot. I've had two people say they bought your road opener and absolutely love it. So you guys, okay. if you're looking for something, hit him up, hit his page up, and see if you can get the candle. Because I mean, especially what's going on in a, in the a spiritual community. I don't know if anybody has been even looking at some of the stuff that's been going on the last couple of weeks, but there are a lot of people that are being called out because they're not who they say they are. Their work is not what it is. So mm -hmm. when you find people that say, I've used this person's product and it worked for me, it's a really high, high endorsement because it's letting him know 
that his stuff works. And also, like I said, if you're looking for something, hit him up because it's the real thing. Really. Now, you're, did, he, go he's ahead. also a tarot reader, right? A professional, I see professional spirit worker, tarot reader, witch, and key master. So when you buy products from you, do you read them first or do you try to so, read them first? Yeah, well, you know, sometimes spirit will just say no. <laughs> sometimes right. spirit will just say no. Um, and mm -hmm. I go back, it depends on, everyone's different. Um, there, I do have other services for folks. Um, I do a monthly, I do a monthly honey jar service uh, just to kind of give a little blessings from month to month. And um, because I know a lot of folks want to, you know, they want, they want information. They want to get, you know, a little something. They want to get a little magic. And um, I definitely understand, you know, growing, you know, growing into all this, you know, like, oh, you know, traveling to New Orleans or buying all these things. Oh, God, it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. So I started something really uh, simple and small. Um, it was basically $10 petitions for people to get blessings from one month into another. And I'm working my honey jar every, literally every day from one full moon into the next. So that way it, brings the sweetness um, as opposed to increasing the um, the sweetness of a relationship, it'd be the sweetness of that person's life. Um, so that way um, they can get what they need, but at the same time, you know, they have the option of getting a reading or they can get whatever other service I have. Okay, I have a, um, and I have weird thoughts sometimes, just random thoughts, but I was thinking with the keys, could you lock something in a box and then say like part of the ritual? And I'm just like random. These are the shower thoughts, you know, the ones that come at you when you're all alone. Say you, you lock something in a box and then part mm -hmm. of the ritual, you go back and you like heat the key up to where it's, you know, fire red and bend that bitch so that you can't unlock it. <laughs> We're only seven minutes and you're getting to the dark shit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like, yeah. I'm like, man, she went there. She was like, yeah, like that bitch up. And I was like, I'm like, you right? went five minutes in. No, I know. Sometimes you need oh to in the past, just get, lock that shit away and bend the key right? so you cannot open it again. You know. That sounds like an uh, that sounds like an amazing working. That sounds like an amazing working. A lot of what um I have a background in case management with folks. Um, I work for a nonprofit that helps the homeless. And a lot of what we do is um, we um, we get trained to basically kind of get the answers from the other person, like so they can come up with their own solution. And I do that with my clients still. And you just came up with an amazing working. <laughs> I don't need to tell you what to do. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Burn that, burn it. Yeah, I'm actually um, in the process of writing um, a book. Um and on on key magic, I'm not gonna use that. Don't worry, you know that's all you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, but like it's um actually burning a key is one of the things I suggest for um when you want to do a cleansing, but also de dedicating it to specific deities as well. Because um oh. when we burn things, we're purifying, we're uh, mm -hmm. shedding the, shedding the ash. Sorry, shedding the layers of that metal, so that way you can have like the metal underneath of it as well. Um, but yeah, that sounds amazing. Uh, I've um so. Let me go, let me start back with where why I why I chose keys. Okay. Um, so with the skeleton key, I mean everyone thinks like, oh my god, it's because the movie with Kate Hudson, right? I'm like, oh no. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean it's it's a cute movie. I like it's the story of you know these you know the the you know the workers that were murdered and they're trying to you know get their lives back. I think that's an amazing story. <laughs> mm. Um, and then but no, it's not. I didn't it's not mainly the movie. It's more of like what the skeleton key means to me. So um, during my research and um, all of what I grew up with, basically, I always, I always loved keys. I always loved, especially old Victorian keys, those like those big, big thick skeleton keys like this. You know, my mom, um, she would always take me to craft stores and vintage shops and we'd all, I would find these. Um, actually going to write this in my book, but um, the movie Return to Oz, uh, Dorothy finds a key that basically helps her, um, you know, unlock the rest of her story. And um, the, that basically kind of made me, think, uh, you know, synchronize keys. Like, oh, keys are magic. Keys are magic automatically. Yeah. And I, I, um, I uh, was... I was a little uh, mischievous kid and I was like roaming no. the neighborhood and I found um, a key. Um, 
And I ran to my mom. I'm like, mom, look, look, it's the key to Oz. It's the key to Oz. I'm seven years old by then. I'm, I'm not, it wasn't like yesterday. Um, and I'm, I'm like, mom, look, it's the key to Oz. And she's like, where did you find this? I'm like, oh, under the neighbor's mat. <laughs> oh my God, Marcus. I know, well, again, you know, like I'm six or seven, you know. <laughs> she's like, put that back, put that back. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. So, um, you know, keys have always been, keys have always been magical to me. Um, and growing into my 20s, um, growing into myself, uh, growing into my magic, you know, um, learning about Wicca, getting kicked out of a coven, uh, growing um, into like adulthood, you know, gay. And I found skeleton keys as my talisman, um, you know, because key- so there's skeleton keys are basically the old like keys to like Victorian locks that actually have the teeth of the key. <laughs> broken. Oh, I love those. Yeah, the teeth of the key are broken so that they can't open up another lock. Um, and then the master's key, the master key is basically the one key that the one key that rules them all, you know, the one that w- would be the skeleton key to open all the different doors in the house, you know, when they had all locks on every single door like that. I did um, not know that. Yeah, there is a slight difference. I mean, I, to use skeleton key, some, you know, synonymously with all of that, it, you know, it's you know everyone understands that um, master keys are basically the ones that will open all the doors. Skeleton keys technically are the ones with the teeth broken, so that um, and then people can use them for whatever purpose. Um, and they're highly versatile um, for magical workings. Uh, for if you if you can't if you're in public and you um, I've seen Christopher Penzak do this at another ritual. Um, he actually had um, a skeleton key um, for his ritual instead of um, instead of an an asame. Um, mm-hmm. you know, because we're in a public space and, you know, people building knives, is, you know, somewhat, <laughs> mm-hmm. somewhat, um, not, uh, not a good thing. Uh, um, and, uh, I actually started, uh, wire wrapping stones onto keys and would wear them and I would get complimented on them. And then I slowly started working up a little tiny business, just wrapping stones on keys, making talismans for people, um, and then it, and then one day it actually grew. Um, so m- uh, one of my friends, um, one of my really good friends, um, and his husband, they invited me over to dinner one day, one night, and um, there was something else going on in my life. I was really upset and about what was happening, and uh, we had dinner. Um, they bring over a box and then with a with a towel over it. And I'm like, what is this? They're like, oh, it's dessert. I'm thinking dessert. I'm like, okay. There's a towel in a box. I'm like, okay, this better not be a kitten or a puppy or something. <laughs> it's no. Uh, I I remove the t- I remove the towel. Tons and tons, like uh, hundreds, of Victorian old style keys, modern keys, rusted, new shiny ones. They're like, here, t- we got these for you. We got- we went to an estate sale. We got these for you. These screamed Marcus. <laughs> you know, do what oh you need. Oh my God. Do. You have amazing friends. I do. You have amazing friends because I would have been up there like in heaven. Crying. Yes. Oh. So they they so they presented you with this box. And I mean, I know you probably your mind was already going a mile and you just fast trying to figure out okay, I can do this with this one, I can wrap this one. Right. And then spirit started talking. <laughs> um, I already, I was slowly working. Um, I was slowly working and connecting myself with the goddess Hecate. Um, she holds three keys to the he- to heaven, hell, and earth, um, to all different dimensions, uh, many different mythos. Um, but these keys actually started talking and, and actually say, "I'm for love." You know, I'm for money. You know, I'm about ancestry. And then um, the idea just came in my into my head. I'm like, "What if I?" was to read with keys, um, you know, to kind of make my own divination system because, you know, like I, I if I bring tarot cards and, you know, I'm gonna look like in in public and then that would be a little suspicious. But if I have random keys, like I'm like, oh, okay, that person works at a hardware store. <laughs> um, so- That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a different way. So did spirit kind of bring this to you that, okay, you could use this? I mean, cause I know if you're a diviner, you literally can read anything. But did mm-hmm. spirit just kind of say, okay, Marcus, this is what we want you to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not um, it's not a set number of um, keys, too. It keeps growing. 
Um, I would say I have about maybe 80, almost to 90 keys in this box. <laughs> wow. that, okay. All right. You, yeah. you got to give a demonstration. You have to give a demonstration how you read with keys because I, I think it's amazing, but I've never even okay. seen it. Thank you. Yoda. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so basically when I, um, when I have a reading with somebody, um, you know, we just talk really briefly and like, Hey, what's going on? You know, um, it's, to, you know, one of my other, um, another colleague um, in this work, uh, Hexabah, she be, be, mentions in her Conjure series that um, people usually ask for three things, money, love, or protection. So I'm like, okay, is it one of these three? If it's not, okay, let's work on something else. But usually it's one of those three. And then I ask them to, well, pre-COVID, um, I would ask them to breathe into the box, you know, just share a little bit of their energy. I have a I have a prayer that I would say, check this up, and then cast it out onto my mat, which I have kind of basically reading where that person's blessings, where their 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 blessings are going, and when if things are leading them, um, if there are if there's like a good flow of like luck. Um, I work with Orion Foxwood's uh, Crossroads, um, the the Roads of Life, Death, Luck, and Love. So I read basically, you know, what's manifesting in those in those areas of life, but also what's manifesting for that person right now. Um, I, like everyone's like, oh, read my future, read my future. I'm like, I don't read your future. I let you live it. And um, we basically just see like what's happening in that moment. And it's very telling, <laughs> very, very, very telling. I think the great thing about it is, is that literally you're showing somebody how to navigate life with the keys. It's almost mm -hmm. like I'm opening this door right now. I mean, yeah, you can really connect thing. with that. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, uh, again, I allude to this. I, I allude to a lot of stories with keys. And you know, back back in the days of slavery, the master's key is what sets you free. It would unshackle you from the things that bind you from, from blocking you from your freedom. So, you know, and in another way, I would kind of just tell folks like you actually have the power. I'm not telling you. I'm already telling you what you already need to know. You know, Absolutely. Folks, other folks just need that reassurance that, you know, will I have love? You know, will I will I have success? You know, will will depression ever stop? No, it won't stop. But there's other things you can do. So, <laughs> no, um, and, you know, and to add to the other things. Oh, that's interesting. OK, we just what happened? I couldn't put the comment up. It would hide your face. <laughs> oh, demonstration. OK. Okay, so Chaz wants a demonstration. I, okay, I want. Everybody wants to witness the magic. I think we because we we're just curious. Oh, um, I don't know how I could set this up. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I want to see how I can set this up. Is Lena gonna find a hot, um, brown-haired, blue-eyed man and fall in love? Oh, you got that. Here, I can do that. There. All right, so. Yeah, but would you love me back? That's the real question. Got it, got it. All right, so I can, you know, I have been in situations where this happens, where like, oh, um, you know, just one key, one question, things like that. I've done that. I've done this multiple different ways, you know, especially when I worked in other shops, you know, mm -hmm. setting pricing, setting type of readings, and things like that. So, yes, I can do that. So. Okay. And he uh, must have right. any somebody tall. He's got to be tall. <laughs> Just let the keys Any, talk. Let the keys anything, talk, Lena. Anything else? Well, you're supposed to be specific on what you yeah. want. So, so living, right? <laughs> alive. Yes. Currently alive. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely in their late 20s and 30s. <laughs> That's, a good That's a good one. That's a good one. Make sure he's alive. This is so cool. It reminds me of kind of like the bones, but he's using keys. So, uh, how do I do this? How do I do it like this? How do I do it like that? All right. So, 
Look, I'm, I'm looking up. So, all right, here we go. So the keys that came out of my box, uh, and like I said, they, they come to me in different ways. This is the key of clarity. <laughs> So clearly you have your blessings in front of you. You have another blessing key right here. Um, there has been um, some work, there has been some work um, that's beginning right now with healing, especially. Are, have you actually done any work right now, especially on an emotional level to either um, work through emotional pain or past relationship? No, I pretty much am just not looking. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with who I am as a person. So I would want somebody to compliment me, not complete me, because I'm I'm awesome all by myself. And I got shit to do, you know? I don't need drama. <laughs> so well, my, I, question, my question for you would be how many how how much do you compliment yourself? Not often enough. <laughs> not often enough. Okay. So if you were to um, if you were to if you were to have a compliment every single day, you know, by the end of the day, how how different would you feel? How would I compliment myself? How would you, you feel? Were, if, yeah, if you were oh. complimented on you know, uh, every day, how would how oh, different? Yeah. Would you? I meant like ketchup compliments fries. The fries are still pretty awesome. The ketchup just Condiments? makes it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so confused. I don't know if it's because I'm I, I'm confused. It's like you know French fries, McDonald fries. They're awesome, right? What does that have to do with love? Because oh, to compliment, to compliment, not not verbally, but like Matt. Amazing. But then when you add ketchup, that complements the fries. It makes the fries better. <laughs> but so the fries like, are yeah, amazing to, all by themselves. <laughs> so basically to enhance, to match, or to pair with. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank not you for that clarification. Not to complete. Not your Mercury retrograde. Uh, so. <laughs> Oh my god, it has to be working. I'm like, what the fuck? I told you spirit has a funny way of letting me know things. All right. Look, well, all right. I'm, I'm amazing, okay? If ketchup comes along, great. If not, I'm still amazing. <laughs> right, I okay, I hear you. Um, I would suggest in the meantime, um, I would suggest in the meantime there's some emotional healing that needs to be done. If you have done any recent work, um Yes. Congratulations, you know, step one. Um, but, but also, <laughs> but also to, to have that complimentary person, um, you know, it's, it, we already kind of like went through like, what do you really want? <laughs> you have to make sure they're alive. Um, but also, mm -hmm. you know, what exactly is gonna make you feel, what is, what's gonna make you happy at the end of the day, but also what will challenge you in a relationship, you know? Um, lots of folks forget about that, you know, like, oh, you know, they may look, they may look hot and, you know, everything else, but they may wear socks and sandals, you know, that turns off a lot of people or, um, they like to, they don't like to have, they don't eat things that are white or <laughs> weird things like that, you know, like, right. um, think about that at the same time and also develop that, develop that healing, nurturing that you need right now. So complimenting the things that you need into your life, what you want in a relationship. You are on point. I think, I mean, he's right because you would feel differently if you had these compliments coming in and there is healing that needs to be done. So the clarity is that you need to be ready for that because you need to do some work. So you, I would say with the love reading, definitely on point. Look, I'm all in your bit. I'm your friend. I'm all in your business. Like, yeah, he, you read or right. You read or right. And the best friend. No. <laughs> And um, I pulled a card too. Um, this usually is more like the prescription. Don't go for. Don't be afraid to go dark. <laughs> not like you know. Not like you know. It's like you know. We all know the difference between what is like evil and bad and things like that. Morally wrong, but more like you know. Be vulnerable. Um, the sun is usually a card about happiness. Yes. Like that you know. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Um, you know to you know to let someone be, be take care of you for a, a, a moment to open oh, up about that's something that's hard. <laughs> that it is yeah. hard and you know that's it is point, hard. Though. okay that is freaking good marcus from i mean really just from the key understanding what she needed the self-healing and all that how much is the key reading i mean do they vary 
So I do a full session and do it. I do about 45 minutes to an hour. I think I have it set at 60 right now um, because, you know, it's, it's always, uh, both of y'all probably have this too, but you know, um, spirit basically will say whatever it needs to say, but mm -hmm. you know, but like, okay, well, you know, we're pretty much out of time. You know, uh, do you have any other questions? Oh yeah. What does it say about love? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. um, there's this that's going on. Um, right. you know, I can pull, I can pull something if you want. I, you know, I can, let me listen really quick. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, like it tends to be like an up to like 45 minutes to an hour because sometimes, you know, there are further questions that somebody may have, you know, that's burning on their mind. Well, you already know you answer one question, which, which leads to another question. And then for some people, if they're not like Lena looking for love, you know, you still have that that comes through. It would still come through in the reading. So and you got a lot of people saying that they're interested in it. Mm -hmm. So I think I mean, I, it, it's cool because I like the whole idea of opening up with the key, like literally and then coming back through with the prescription. A lot of people don't realize when you do readings that sometimes you want to give people this prescription on how to move forward. You know, mm -hmm. you just mm. you, you just put it all out there, but now it's like, yeah. how do you do it? Right. Yeah. My um my teacher Tommy Starchild um in the Anderson Fairy tradition um a lot of to be honest a lot of how he teaches it's it's really getting it's pretty much like therapy. I tell people like I'm in therapy every Wednesday, <laughs> and um. Most of the time, it's not this like fluffy, you know, fluffy bunny light a white candle and everything will be better. You know, like, you know, in order for you to really see who you are to get to that authentic self, you have to dig through your shit and sit in it sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. and he's taught me that. He's taught me that. He's teaching me that still. So, but you know, and um, that's what kind of is. If you're if you're following a tradition, that's what that's what tends to happen. You know, if you are getting to those dark places or in finding those like answers. Um, it's very paramount for for spiritual practice too. That's what something I was going to ask you too was about your um, your your fairy tradition. You're in a coven, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, I guess you could say a coven. Yes. Okay. Is it 100% fairy tradition based? So yes, I am a student. I'm a dedicated student of the Anderson fairy tradition. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Um, a lot of folks may. A lot of folks. Um, they hear the word fairy, um, and there's many different spellings of it. It's spelled F-E-R-I, um, and it's basically the understanding that all the gods, all the spirits are basically far from one source. Mm -hmm. They are fairy, um, and it, there's tons of mysteries behind it, and I can't discuss a lot, but yeah. right. <laughs> it's very tricky. It's very tricky. It's very tricksy. Um, and you basically it, it the tradition helps you reveal yourself um it's it's an ecstatic based tradition um meaning that we it's experiential like you are presented to um yourself <laughs> in a way um and i i don't equate it to um african traditional religions but there are there are themes that there are themes that are similar where um i've seen at least in you know in circles and in um ritual um there is possession work uh there is possession that does happen it's not everybody that does um does that but it is something that does happen and the founder victor anderson um he had different um modalities and practices of magic as far as from what i remember and what i can recall right now um he was he worked with Papa Legba. Uh, he he also had the he was also presented with the um, the head deity of our of our tradition, um, Malak Taus, the the peacock angel. So um, there's wow. many. It, it's not an eclectic tradition, um, but it is like I said, it's a very experiential tradition. You, um, it's not equated to Wicca. A lot of folks would say. Um, apparently, a lot of folks would say in the past that fairy is very scary uh, because you know we do go to those dark places. Um, there has been uh, an there has been talk of that. It was equated to, you know, what conjure is today. You know, uh, yeah, working. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, um, yeah, that's what they're saying here. It has very diverse influences, such as Huna, Bodu, Fairy Lore, Kabbalah, Hoodoo, Tantra, and Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. So the com it's the combination of things, and understanding that you know, different flavors, same cookbook. 
um, <laughs> different mm -hmm. recipes in a way. More tools in your toolbox. I would say so, yes. The reason I asked was because I have been looking for a fairy coven and I find covens that have like, you know, 13 lessons and then one of those lessons will be on the fairy tradition. But I, it's very hard to find one that's 100%. Right. Mm. In, um, in my experience, um, so I'm told this every time, um, and I'm sure uh, folks that are in an, any other tradition um, can understand this. I was told at the very beginning that, um, you know, if I, if, I, if I walk this path, my life will be destroyed. My mm -hmm. life will be destroyed. I will, lose, I will lose friends. I probably will lose people I love. Um, I will probably lose my house, my job, everything. And um, fairy fucks you up. <laughs> uh, fairy, fairy does fuck you up. Um, I can say um, within the past couple of years, a lot of things have fucked up in my life, but it is for the better. And if this is the path for you, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of folks, oh, go ahead. Oh, well, I think Linda was going to talk, but I was going to say a lot of people don't understand no matter what your path is, there is a, a spiritual death and mm -hmm. a rebirth and it has to happen. It's, it's so, not, you have to be broken down in order to be built back up. You have to. And it, oh. it depends on whatever oh. tradition. And a lot of people don't realize it going in because when they get through that place and it's like, oh, my God, I'm losing this. I'm losing it. And they want to hold on to it they don't realize that they have to let it go so that they can move on to that next thing. So I think that's, I, I think it's a really good way of explaining it because I get this from a lot of, from people a lot of times, it's like, I'm losing everything. And I'm like, yeah, but you're, you're really not. It feels that way, but you're going to morph into something, somebody that is it's different and it's in a, in a better way, but it's hard. Right. So, My, uh, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. So um, my uh, so my teacher Tommy Starchild uh, says that it, what's happening it's the death of the ego self. So mm -hmm. like your your ego will never die, your ego gets exposed, and you know it's being held. There's a mirror being held up, and in in this tradition and how it's being taught, um, at least in, in my perspective, um, you know you do see a lot of things. You know a lot of scary things. You know I I would sometimes have nightmares. I would sometimes. Um, really question, you know, um, myself, you know, like, am I a liar? Am I, am I a fake? <laughs> and then, no, um, that's real. And then, and then that's listen, real. yeah. And then listening to it, um, listening to that, you know, like maybe that, you know, it's all just my ego talking on you know, saying like, I can't do all this. I can't do all that. Um, it's been very, he's been very, <laughs> sorry, buttering him up. I know. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm just, I have to say I'm very glad. I'm very blessed. I wouldn't be here if he was if I was not in this tradition. But at the no, same you time, know, you know, yeah, I, I lost a lot of things at this. But I think it's great that you realize, like you said, when the student was ready, the teacher came. You know, a lot of times when we talk about this in any tradition, you have to be very careful with the mentor, the elder that comes into your life. Because really spiritual growth is life changing. If you don't have that right person, sometimes you can be broken down and you won't be able to build back up the right way. So I see how emotional that you get. And it's because somebody literally came into your life and they opened up that door and they showed you who you are. And you're beautiful, man. You're freaking beautiful. You are. I love your energy and I love how you are. You, It's like I, I am who I am. When people meet you in person, you guys, it's like, here I am. You know, this is the energy. Take here it away. Oh, please don't start singing because I'm going to start right. singing with you because I love your TikTok videos. I'm sitting here waiting for him to rein in. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my TikTok. I know. Sorry. I'm on TikTok, folks. Just look at the skeleton key. Under I love yes. He's on TikTok and it's so freaking good, oh, wait. though. Let me, oh, let me finish this really quick uh, for, for Lena. Um, so uh, I know there are there are teachers that do have, that actually do have like, um, workshops and they do teach and stuff like that um i can say uh i can definitely give you some links later um but you know there, there's like i said there are teachers available um uh that can actually give you more information uh and, and what you're needing to do and 
Um, but like we said, you know, that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Um, when you're ready, when it happens, it happens. So. All right, awesome, thank you. That would be perfect for you, Lena. Lena's been ready for a while. She's been ready for a while, and I think it's time. So if you if, if it connects with you, definitely you got to do it. She's like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. She'll do it. <laughs> Can we, I, I want to see some of your jewelry because a lot of people have it who are not on your page who haven't seen. Do you have anything that you can show? Because he has amazing jewelry, you guys. Yes. Yeah, uh, I do. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. Um, I have, I have a story about that one piece. Mask, too. Oh, mask was oh, amazing. Just on my the mask? Huh? Yes. My mask? Oh, me. that was for uh, that was for Halloween. Yeah, that was my um hold on a second. Okay. Yes. So for for Halloween, I am dressing up still. Um I am the male version of Harley Quinn, basically. I love that. I made it, yeah. I got all these little oh, gems. Oh, my got freaking this mask God. And then I have like a jester's collar and um, a leather jacket. And I painted it red on the shoulders and I have diamonds on my back. And stuff. You are so freaking talented. Thank you. And let me show you it my other in, stuff. When, when you came in St. John last time, remember you had that coat. You had that oh amazing black coat, yes. and I kept going, I want to snatch this off this man's back. There was a second one. There was a second one in that shop, uh, a couple a couple stores down from Hex, um, in one of the one of the thrift shops, uh, one of those big thrift shops, either way. But um, yeah, um, I still have that. I'm actually wearing that this um, on Saturday, on Halloween. I'm, um, I'm officiating a friend's wedding, <laughs> and uh, we're dressing up, really? and I'm... Yeah, so I'm gonna wear that tonight. It's so basically the coat I have is it's black velvet with gold filigree swirls and big collar. Oh, it's beautiful. Like a 16th century noble, basically. Um, and then I have a devil mask <laughs> and a and the the nice ruffle collar. So um, I'm gonna wear that to her wedding. Uh, she's a witch too. So. Oh my god! Nobody be, can ever call uh, you no. basic. Never. No, right? Yeah. No I'm, ever. So, I'm gonna be the dark lord. So she gets married by the dark lord. <laughs> That is freaking crazy, but it's amazing. <laughs> I didn't even know that you could. I didn't know you were a minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was um, it was suggested to me um when I first worked at a at a metaphysical shop um at Golden Rose Psychic Services um Golden Rose in San Diego with Dr. Lauren um he's amazing um uh, that was actually my first introduction to energy healing um I did read tarot cards but they kind of um, helped me kind of tune into other like intuitive skills. I have. Um, I actually, it's funny because every time I, every time I have to slow down when, with uh, the shops uh, because I notice a pattern. Um, anytime that I will work at a shop or start to read at a shop, um, either the shop or the relationship with that company will end within a year. Wow. <laughs> why? Why do you think that is? I don't know. The economy, um, rent, you know, things like that. It's usually that, but um, uh, it's yeah, it's it's um, it's a little it's a little pattern, and um, I, I'm probably you know helping them release the anger towards the end of it, um, but it's you know it's just what I've noticed. So I'm kind of so I'm starting to do everything via camera, um, online and at home. So. <laughs> Mrs. Um, <laughs> Burke is like, I'm going to save your shop. I'm not going to come. Uh, gonna don't come worry. All right. When the shop happens, it happens. But let me show you some of the work I have here. So here is, there we go. There's a skeleton key with brass wire and Tibetan quartz. Uh, I don't, beautiful. I do not have this posted anywhere right now, but um, I'm, sh I'm showing you all the, uh, the exclusive stuff. So, okay. And then... Uh, a witch's best friend, black tourmaline, with this uh, with another. Ah, I like that one. Wrapped in another brass. I like working with brass. Um, let's see, another black tourmaline. This is thicker, with a little bit more thicker silver. And then hematite. Uh, this one kind of looked like a shield, and I, I had to wrap it this way. So, oh wow. It bounce, the light just bounces off like a shield. That would be good for protection, that one. Right. All of them, yeah. 
And then, um, so this is actually a piece that I wear a lot. Um, I, you know, back in the day, you know, I was all, you know, all about chakras, all about chakras, because chakras are everything, you know, we all want the heart chakra open, things, like, you know, amongst everything else. Um, and so I would actually, I, I put a rainbow um, on this one um, for, for many different reasons, but um, this is one of my big talismans. And uh, it's Tanya. Uh, so the last, do you remember what happened on the last day of the St. John's Eve? Um, Shindig, when we went to the yep. shop, we got, that, we got that blessing by Papa Hector. And uh, what what's the okay, so um, it's not that big of a deal. But uh, so on the end of the St. John's Eve uh, weekend, uh, Papa Hector and uh, uh, San Moise, basically uh, the the two, uh, one of the two of the six facilitators, uh, mm -hmm. they. We're offering a road opening blessing uh, to, to to folks, and so basically, you would go to the shop on the last day um, as a part of the closing ceremony. Mm -hmm. So we, we were told to wear, sh you know, shorts, you know, things that because we're going to get drenched. We're going to have a blessing um, in their tradition, and um, so I'm getting in line, and I see in front of me um, there's a table, two bowls, one has water, um, and the other one's to catch the water, a candle with beautiful wax dripping. Um, Papa Hector's ha has a bell and then San Moise is um, calling on calling on the spirits um, to mm -hmm. open the roads. And so um, it's my turn and I see, you know, the person before me, you know, they get the water dunked on them um, that's been blessed and has herbs and oils. Um, and they're like, okay, cool. So just bow your head and then we're just going to put the water on you. I'm like, all right, cool. So I bow my head <laughs> and Pop actor rings the bell, chanting, um, and then San Jose is chanting as well. They're like, okay, now lift your head. And there's, they lift your head and they wrap a, a handkerchief around you. Mm -hmm. My head is held down. <laughs> My head is held down and I can't move. And I'm like, what? Oh, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, what the fuck is going on? And I keep moving I, my head. I'm like, the table starts. I'm like, oh my god, I'm no, this is not charmed, this is not lifetime, no, this is not happening to me. And oh, then, yeah. and then San, San Moise, he dunks another full bowl of water on me, <laughs> and Papa Hector's like ringing, hey girl, hey, sorry, go ahead. Papa Hector's like ringing the bell, they're like chanting again. I'm like, oh my God. And so like, I'm trying to lift my head up and my head, I could feel my neck being held down. I'm like, the table's just like shaking. I'm like, oh my God, this is not, <laughs> so sorry, Marcus. This is not happening to me. And then oh. I, I look down, <laughs> stupid, this, okay, you're not stupid, you're not stupid. <laughs> the skeleton key was hooked on the end of the table. So every time I would move up, it would shake the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's and I'm like, oh, that's it. So I just went. <laughs> oh my God, Marcus! Yeah. I cannot laugh. I can't control my bowels. I cannot yeah. laugh. Oh my God! No, no, no! <laughs> Definitely laugh. Yeah. If you gotta go, you gotta, no. Ooh, you gotta go. No. <laughs> oh my God! I'm crying. Yeah, I'm it's crying. A, I finally lifted my head up and then Papa Hector just like ran to me with a handkerchief and like wrapped it on me. And everyone was like, oh my God, what oh. happened? What happened? Are you okay? I'm like, oh yeah, my necklace got caught. That's it. Don't worry. Oh. <laughs> and then, and then Ma Mama story, she's like, you know, that's spirit talking, right? You know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, bl you know, that's a blessing, right? I'm like, yeah, I know, oh I know. <laughs> Where was I at? I must have been at the back of the line. I, I would have been on the floor. I would have been on the floor. Oh my god. So the key was hooked. <laughs> yeah. The key was hooked. And it was a road opening blessing. So, you know, got, and you know, I got my roads open. My roads were open and everything else and it was and it was an amazing weekend. I loved I loved I loved hanging out with you and um yeah, it, yeah I can't wait to be Oh my god. That made <laughs> and my I get night. my head held down by the spirit. <laughs> Spirit was like, no, let's get, let's put some more water. Let's keep them down here and put some more water. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fill those lungs. <laughs> and I know, and I know, Papa was probably he probably just kept just pouring on you. Oh my god, you probably thought he was trying to do an exorcism or something. Uh, god knows, I need it. <laughs> 
<sighs> yeah, uh, there's so there's that. <laughs> but oh this my is God, yeah. This is freaking so this funny. is my towel. One of my biggest talismans. I will always <sighs> keep it with me. So because nice. that was the one key, <laughs> the one key to <laughs> the that one ceremony. So. Oh my God, Nikki loves you. I tell you that it loves you. Oh, she, she, you came in on the right part, girl. You one hundred percent came in on the right part. But I'm like, wait, what happened? But then I'm like, yes. that sounds kind of funny. Uh, um. <laughs> it wasn't. It was a good event too because I remember at one point. I mean, we had water and leaves everywhere because everybody was getting their hair washed. In fact, I think they're doing that in Omaha in December. They're gonna do another one. Nice. So yeah, but it Are was you just really. Go? I nah, I, nah, I'm good. I'm I'm spent out right now. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> like, it's no, like, it's control like your energy. No. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, no. somebody who was that no. uh, Lotus Mystic Spa. Uh, I want to keep saying Lotus Mystic Spa because we have a spa that says the same name. Lotus Mystic Haven said you got double blessed, double blessed, and they're right. You did. You got double blessed. <laughs> so um, you're writing your book. Are you going to be teaching any classes? What What do you um, have um, coming up? Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm really inspired by a lot of folks. Sorry, I'm waving the key like it's a mom. <laughs> That's a weapon. Um, <laughs> I, I I am slowly writing a book. Um, it is it is coming together. I want it. That's the thing in my head. You know, my ego kind of tells me I have to do it correctly. I have to make sure I have mm -hmm. sources. I have to make sure that it sounds right. I have to make sure there's an appendix. I have to make sure that there's ingredients and recipes. And I'm like, no, shut up. <laughs> um, so yeah. I, I am doing research and I'm trying to make, you know, kind of bring more, um, bring more things together to be, you know, I want a book, not a zine. Um, so uh, that way it just gets out there. Um, I, um, I have already covered a couple of things on how to cleanse your key, how to work with your key, spells and deities. Um, and also uh, maybe two years ago uh, at PantheaCon, um, it's a pagan convention in California. It's no longer, it's, it's, it's disbanded now. But um, two years ago, uh, the two publishers, Llewellyn and Weiser, they had their, um, their publishing agents uh, do, they, they had like office hours. And so you got to pitch your book. If you wanted to pitch a book, a tarot card deck or anything like that, um, just see, you know, shoot your shot and see what happens. So I talked to both of them and they're like, yes, yes, please tell us more, tell us more. And I'm like, okay, okay. I haven't written it yet. But so. it's good. They're always looking for new talent. And I think what you're bringing to the table is different is different because sometimes you get the same type of book over and over again and they need they need something different. So this is a, I, I, I love it. I think it's going to be really great. It's very fascinating. Very fascinating. Thanks. And there's so many different yeah. ways you can go with it. Because I didn't think about either purifying with a key. I mean, of course, we think about road opening. Most people, when you talk about keys, the only thing that they do see is road opening. Or locking it down. Oh, or yeah. locking it down. Yeah, you can shut, you can shut someone ma someone's mouth with this. You can shut down their roads with this too. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, a lot of different things. Um, and I'm still working out a couple of kinks. Um, and you know, and we, you know, it's it's funny when you start talking about you know the different things that you like, especially about magic. You find other people have stories that are they're similar or that are so fantastical. Um, I did teach a magic workshop at Pantheacon a couple of times. And one of the attendees, she mentioned, you know, this like this family would do this with keys. And I'm like, oh my god, I never knew that. <laughs> that's so that's amazing. So um, it's little things here and there you find in America, you know, like um, you know, Irish settled families, Native Americans, you know, um, you know, different different practices, you know, actually use keys for different things. So it's 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 funny how they just kind of come together right now. So. And then it makes sense. I'm, it's right. I'm writing a book for it. Didn't um, she? She was it you and I because I had a, another friend, a client who was talking about. She works in a, a mental facility, um, and they have a certain ward where they still use keys for it because most of them are like the the key cards now. But they have one where she goes, no, they actually have keys still I would not, on the chain. I, I would not want to be. Yeah, and she's like, yeah, there, really there's, um, I believe there's somebody in New Orleans that sells keys. 
I do. I have um I have keys. Yeah, there's there's someone in New Orleans that will write. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, go, no, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, there is somebody in New Orleans that actually sells or procures um, keys from mental hospitals, old jails, and things like mm -hmm. that. I mean, I mean, it's... That's what I have. I have, I have the big old jail keys, the old prison keys. I have three of them. Um, and I use them to kind of, you know, shut people in. I do baneful magic with it. But if, you know, for me, if I were to have a mental, a mental asylum key, I would use it to drive somebody crazy and, yeah. I will show you two keys that I received this past year. This one's for justice. Nice. Yeah. It's just an old one. Very, it very is. old. Yeah, you can hear it in the metal too. <laughs> Almost like a tuning fork. And then this one, um, it, it looks like it's like the key to the city from like the mayor's office or the key to Disneyland. Um, but <laughs> I call it the shatterer. Uh, because this wow. is heavy. Oh. This is heavy. Like, yeah, this is pretty heavy. Yeah, you know, this will bust open blockages. So <laughs> I just love very, very that heavy. one. That's a nice key, though. Yeah, this sits on one of my shrines. So I only pull. I only pull this down, especially if I need to do something big. Jeez, that is nice. Like in the old, old days, long, long time ago, they used to have those really giant keys that people would hang on their wall. And mm -hmm. I'm like, where did those go? Oh, I love those, right? Ooh. Yeah, no, no, actually, um, yeah, my mom uh, had, um, my mom had one of those old, like, uh, Victor not Victorian keys, but those, like, grass giant keys um, hanging on the wall when I was little and stuff like that. I don't know what happened to it either, but like, it must have like, gotten lost during one of the moves that we had. Yeah, my grandmother had it, and I was like, I don't know where that key went, but it was huge. Yeah, I love finding keys. Um, I, in and I, I spe oh, I have a uh, I have a dealer uh, <laughs> in San Diego that actually helps. Um, they know the work that I do, and they give. It's nice that they give me a discount and stuff like that. But you know, like they're like, oh, like what are you doing this time? I'm like, oh, well, you know, someone needs like you know road opening. Oh, Valentine's Day's coming up. I'm making a couple of love charms for people. Like, oh, I'm making something for for you know someone to help increase their finances. You know, like oh, that's really cool. Like, oh, hey, can you wrap this stone for me? I'm like, yeah, sure. Oh, you know, it's um, it's really cool that they've actually helped out and. They're not. They're not like us. They're not witchy or anything like that. They're. They're just like the procurers for the. For yeah, like they know that that's what you like, so they get it for you. What about yeah. antique shops? Have you found? Have you have luck finding any keys there? So I specifically go to my source because they they give me a good deal. A lot of folks. Um, so if you go to a if you go to like a locksmith, they can legally they cannot sell you a skeleton key or yeah old old skeleton key. Like I said before. Um, the keys, um, skeleton keys are the ones with the teeth are broken. So like this will be nicked or something like that. And then, mm -hmm. then you know, and then the master key opens every single door. Um, so there are still um, models of keys to like old trunks, old houses. Um, you can get one of those like other like, like generic skeleton keys that like Ace Hardware. Um, mm -hmm that you could open certain doors, but not every door. But um, a locksmith will tell you, at least in California, I don't know anywhere else, um, that they won't, they can't sell you a skeleton key. Um, so if you go to like a thrift store, um, sometimes they'll be for like two bucks. If you go to um, a different antique store with really pricey antiques, sometimes they're $50 because they have the fil there's filigree, the type of metal. Um, the weight, uh, it really depends. Um, I always tell folks, especially if they want to wear one, if they want to wear one um, for protection or for their magic and stuff like that, there's many different things they can do. Just be mindful of the metal and also, you know, like where you're placing it too and how you work with it. I, um, I, I know somebody that actually, you know, for a long time they wanted to bring love into their life. They didn't really do anything with the key specifically. They didn't work with it, um, but they said, this is my love talisman, it's the key to my heart. And they had such a hard time finding love or you know, any meaningful relationship. And like, after a while, I'm like, you know, let me take a look at that key. And like, it, I'm like, did you do anything with it? Did you set intention? Did you, did you light a candle or anything? And they're like, no, it's just the key to my heart. I'm like, this is dead. <laughs> It's an iron key. There's nothing on this. You're putting iron over your heart. You're not getting anything to or from you. <laughs> you know. Wow. But, yeah. So if you get a key, you know, make sure that you're doing. You're putting something onto it. You're cleansing it. You're asking the spirit of that key. Um. You know, to help open these specific doors, close certain things, things like that. Um. 
because you know that they can't affect you that way. Um, you know, they had they had about a prote- uh, protect they had a bout of depression um, from from it, and I I suggested that they should you know cleanse it or get rid of it, and then they we got something else. Wow. Um, I know you have a class in like a minute and a half. Oh yeah. Anything you want to say? And you ladies can stay because um, we want Shishi to do her thing. But go ahead. What thing? All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, your thing. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah, I do have to go to a class right now. Um, Lou Flores, who's um, who's a friend colleague, he's actually teaching a brujeria toolkit class. Um, I believe the class is full, but he's actually does this um, a couple times throughout the years. Um, and uh, they so basically, if you're interested in a reading, I so I do readings, consultations, services, and products. Go on my website. Um, right now, I actually have um, a working for Samhain for, for this coming Saturday. Low moon, full moon, Samhain, I know, um, and Mercury retrograde. I am basically empowering skeleton keys for specific intentions. So if you would like that, um, it's $20 just to donate, and then it gets mailed to you after Day of the Dead. Um, and uh, you can wait. You can you can look at my website for further services. I do a lot of different things. You can see I'm pretty creative with what I can do, and um, I'm actually inspired to maybe teach something in the future. I just want to see like where I want to put, test the waters with stuff right now and see where things are going. And look up for my book. Um, it's going to be about skeleton keys. Exciting! I'm going to get your book because I like keys, so I'm definitely getting your book. And you are phenomenal. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this. I mean, I learned some stuff. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy you were here. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I can't wait to see you again. Oh, hopefully soon. Hopefully, when COVID, we can get out and we can go get beignets and coffee. Oh God, that's another story. <laughs> no. No, they're I like, oh, honey, can you finish my beignets? I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Then everyone at the table, oh Marcus, can you finish my beignets? I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I had twelve beignets. Yes, we piled them. We piled, but hey, you handled it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spirit of New Orleans got me stuck there. <laughs> They're like, welcome. <laughs> Just because we loved you. That's why we did it oh, yeah. like that. Of course, of course, of course. Well, well, good luck with your class and everything, babe. And thank you so nice. much. It was so good thank talking you to you. Likewise. All right. Nice seeing y'all and hope to see some of y'all next time. Bye. 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 Okay, Shishi, go get your box. Oh, there's, okay, I got, oh, I'm going to open it on my, okay. I'm going to go get my box. I told her to wait and open it online. Oh, okay, because I was like, what, what thing, what thing? I was wondering what thing, too. She's like, what am I supposed to be doing? I know, I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. I need something. Okay, and my knife. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm excited. Is it going to be like a spider cup like Tanya said? Be careful because it might jump. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, let me get back. I'm like, okay, look, I can't take any type of excitement or any sudden movements. I'm just letting y'all know. I love it. I oh my god. Well, hold it. What what what? Oh, sister. Look, it says I'm pretty sure we're more than sisters. We really are a gang. We're more like wait, yeah. We are like a really small gang. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Lena gives the best gift. She does. Oh my god! There's a lot of thought into her I gifts too. I can't take this one to work because if they try to steal it, we're gonna be fighting. But I love it. I look at the logo is there. Mhm. <laughs> yeah, I gotta put my, 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 my how you do it? Like shit. There we go. I got the glare. <laughs> my booty looks good on this mug too, y'all. You got a great cut. Great cut. <laughs> My legs look great and I look taller, so I appreciate that. Oh, you do look taller. Yeah, you got good legs. And I, you know, I have less, I have less wobbly, but I'm loving this. Like this new me that you're manifesting on this cup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, 
And Lena with her black girl booty. Look at that. I know. Look, now it's like really booty for real. I, I think my real one's just a little bit bigger than the one on the cup. <laughs> you got cakes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, you guys. You, you shrunk my booty, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I want a little bit of a little bitty booty. I think I shrunk all of our booties. I'm like, because I got, ugh. And Tanya, I have yet to see Tanya's booty. Everybody else got to see it. So I'm going to have to wait one day. Girl, I don't know. If I keep running to the bathroom, I ain't going to have no booty left. I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm fixing to go eat me some soup and crackers now and drink my rice water. <laughs> broccoli soup. You need some oh. cheese. <laughs> oh, bro oh, no. No. Oh my God, I was so panicked when you wrote me. I was like, go to the doctor, go to the doctor right now. Just go to the doctor. <laughs> I know, but you know, uh, poor Trudy ended up getting like emergency surgery because that parasite tore her up. I know, that's why I was like, go to the doctor, go to the doctor, just see. Ah, uh, well, if I don't, I mean, really, Alyssa, she helped me. She was like, rice water, rice water. And I was like, oh, it just seemed horrible. Rice water. Do you boil the rice and then drink the water? Yes, and you drink the water. And it's just like, oh. And you put salt and butter in it? Anything? That's just <laughs> making it. I just drank it. And I was just like, it's, it, I mean, it made me feel better because last night was just, it was bad. It was bad. So it helped. I will say it did help. I feel bad. I feel weak, but it's because I haven't been eating a lot. But I'm going to go eat me some soup and some crackers and, you know, hold it down. Well, you know, cleansing comes in many different forms. Mm. <laughs> Elisa said, I'm patient. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz came out. She's like, you better drink the rice water. And I was like, and her and Elisa were going back and forth. <laughs> talking about me drinking the rice water. So I'm like, who is snitching to this woman and I'm not drinking this rice water? <laughs> I'm talking to Jasmine. I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, you know, Jazz will rat you out. She's like, no, oh, she's yeah. still not drinking it. She's in the bathroom, but she didn't drink her rice water. That's why she's in the bathroom. Uh, I told her snitches get stitches. She keep on. <laughs> yeah, right. Any <laughs> you. Whatever. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I love you. I'm going to go give you something to eat and I will see y'all tomorrow, right? Yes. 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 See you tomorrow. Sorry about being stuck in traffic. So I. Oh, yeah. It's okay. You're here now. So see y'all later. See you Bye. later. Bye, Bye guys. Um.